Hello, everybody. Welcome to our online church service on third of May, Sunday,、uh, of our Olive Tree Church. I'm aware that today、uh, some local churches will also be joining us, like、uh, Methodist Church of Hightown, and.、Um, Uh, I want to say we are so privileged to be able to worship God whenever we want to and wherever we are. Because after all, the church is not a building; the church is us. We are the church. We are the children of God, and we are His people. And um, uh, we are also、uh, in a time of uh, uh, Ramadan for Muslim neighbors around us. And we can also pray for them that during this time, when they seek、uh, their God, that Jesus Christ can be revealed to them, just as、uh, He did、uh, with lots of people, and He is doing that all over the world. So praise God! And、uh, just to tell you that uh, uh, during this lockdown,、uh, people's lives are very much affected and changed. Uh, so we also be including、uh, some of the uh, video diaries uh, uh, in the end of the service, and uh, uh, thank you for those who、uh, take the effort to make them. And、uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, a lot of good is coming out of this bad situation because God is good;、uh, He is good all the time, and He can turn any bad thing into goodness. As a matter of fact, in history. About two thousand two thousand years ago, God changed the most unjust、uh, act of human being into the best blessing, which is the death of Jesus Christ, and His death is for our good and our salvation. So let's pray、uh, as an open、uh, for our t-、uh, for today's service. Let's pray, dear Jesus Christ. We thank you. We exalt. Your name, because your name is above all other names, and there will be a time that every knee shall bow and every mouth confess that you are the Lord, you are God, and you are the meaning of life. And we thank you during this lockdown, we have much more time for God, for you, and for our families. And I pray also、uh, during this service, our power will be with us. And your revelation will be with us, that we can know you better, and you know us. And I also ask that you will renew our strength. You give us fresh revelations of who you are and who we are, and also what we should be doing、uh, according to your will, according to your time for us. Thank you, Jesus. If we pray in Jesus' mighty name, Amen.
are sitting in one of Alexander's dens that he's made. He's enjoyed playing with all his toys that he normally doesn't get time to play with. Normally we're rushing off to lots of different toddler groups and Chris is rush rushing off to work but things have been quite different in lockdown. In the mornings we've normally started off quite relaxed, maybe doing a bit of colouring while watching the TV and having breakfast. They really like reading books, so normally they'll do a bit of that together. Yeah. Once we're dressed, we're normally off into the garden. We've been lucky the weather's been so good. They've enjoyed playing with hot water and sponges. That's kept them entertained for quite a long time. also been another firm favourite. I wonder what our water bill will look like at the end of this. Um, as had the sand, which also gets filled with water. When we've not been outside in the mornings, we've normally had a leisurely bath and they like watching the water to go down the plug hole. When Zara's asleep, it gets a little bit calmer. Alexander can normally calm down and focus on something himself. Although this isn't always a neat a good idea. A, a activity. Also when Zara's asleep, sometimes me and Alexander have been going off to the allotment and he's enjoyed playing with the hose and watering the seeds that we've planted. Jump. Zara's getting more adventurous and she's learnt to jump. When they're both awake again, things normally descend into chaos in the afternoons with lots of leaping about on the furniture <laughs> and silliness which normally ends up in Zara being pushed about in something or other. If we've not been out and about earlier in the day um, once Chris has finished work we'll go out for a walk if the weather's nice or Alexander would like to have a go on his scooter just to get out um, of the house which always ends up in a quick run around the bush in our front garden. We've been thankful for some toys which have been given from um, Kieran he no longer needs which kept them entertained and visits from Colin and Gloria through the window. Grandma's birthday was also a bit different this year and we had a nice party on Zoom. I'm telling you now, it is so much easier to be in front of everyone than to record in my room. Good morning everyone. I hope that you're well and staying at home it has not been too much of a drag for you. This Sunday in Sunday School we are looking at finding pasture. Now. We've got a quiz, just like we would have if we were at church. And this quiz is to see if you can recognise different voices. Now, would you have been able to know it was my voice if you couldn't see me? Well, here is a quiz to see if you can recognise some of these famous characters. Ooh, Scooby Snack. And it is, of course, vital at the same time that we prepare for the remote possibility that Brussels refuses any further to negotiate. If you're tired of arguing with strangers on the internet, try talking with one of them in real life. If you're disappointed by your elected officials, grab a clipboard, get some signatures, and run for office yourself. I like to swing upon my butch and sing my little song But there's a cat that's after me and won't let me alone I taught, I taught a putty cat a tweepin' upon me I did, I taught a putty cat as plain as he could be We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure Better days will return We will be with our friends again we will be with our families again. We will meet again.
But for now, I send my thanks and warmest good wishes to you all. A few moments later. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. One hour later. I can't remember what I was saying. Two thousand years later. So, I hope that you managed to get some of them. I'll email the answers later. Maybe, if I remember. But the same way that we can hear a voice and recognise it straight away and attach a name to it is the same way that a sheep recognises its shepherd's voice and will obey it and the shepherd will recognise each and every sheep by name. We know someone very special who compared himself to a shepherd. Do you know who that is? I'm sure you do. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ compared himself to the good shepherd. Now he is an excellent shepherd and I'm going to share with you a story from the Bible Stories book. It's also from the Gospel of John chapter 10. The Good Shepherd. Jesus told his followers, the truth is that anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate is a thief. The shepherd enters the gate and when he does, the watchman gladly opens it for him. The shepherd knows the name of each of his sheep and they recognise the voice so that when he calls they will follow him. They will never go after someone who they did not know. Instead they will run away because they do not recognise their voice. I am the sheep's gate. Everyone who ever came before me was a thief or a robber but no matter what they said the sheep paid no attention. I am the gate, and whoever comes in through me will be saved. Such a person can come and go as they please, and they will find good land up to which to graze. When a thief comes, he steals and destroys, but I have come in order that my people will enjoy a full and happy life. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. When a casual worker sees the wolf approaching the sheep, he will run away because the fate of the sheep is of little interest to him. As soon as he has deserted the flock, the wolf gets in amongst them and creates havoc as he pleases. But my sheep are protected and secure in my love. I am the good shepherd. As my father knows me and I know him, so I am known by my sheep. I am going to give my life for the sheep. I care for my sheep. And when I have given my life for my sheep, I will take it up again. As well as the sheep of this pen, I have others too. When I have brought them, there will be one flock and one shepherd for all my sheep. My father loves me because I am about to lay down my life for the sheep. I will lay down my life of my own free will. No one can force me to do it. It is my own decision. Thanks be to God for that wonderful reading. Okay, so some activities that you might want to do at home, such as looking after lots of different things. Now in this time, we have been looking after ourselves a lot more. We've been looking after other people. We've been trying to keep safe. Some of you may have some pets that you could be looking after. Others may have some plants that you could be looking after. But it's really important that we do take care of each other. So some activities that you could do is you could create an obstacle course. You could blindfold yourselves and see if you can direct either yourself or a grown up through the house without bumping into anything. You might want to create some biscuits. You could have them be sheep shaped or something that you like. Just something that is nice and warm and comforting. <laughs> Even though we are all taking extra care in these times, we have to know that we are not alone. God is always with us. And here is a poem that if you want to have a plant nearby, or something to cuddle on to, I want you to listen to the words of these poems. So just close your eyes, and the words that I'm going to read are based on Psalm 
121. I look up at the hills and wonder where I will find help. My help comes from you, Lord, who made heaven and earth. You will not let me stumble. You will not doze off while you shelter me. You watch over Israel and never doze off or fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. He is right there at your side, giving you shade, so that the sun won't burn you during the day, nor the moon harm you during the night. The Lord will save you from all trouble. He will guard your whole life. The Lord will watch over you as you go about all your business, now and always. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and rest of the week. Bye. sisters in Jesus Christ. Welcome to our online service for Olive Tree Church. It's great to see you again this morning. And uh, yes, uh, let's get into the Word of God. I believe today God has something really special for me to uh, to uh, tell us, uh, tell you. And, uh, and uh, let's uh, get into the Word of God. And uh, before that, I'm, I want to say I, I'm really thankful that we have this privilege to worship God wherever we are. Because the church is not about the building. The church is about the people of God. The people of God are the church. Okay, so wherever you are, we have this privilege to get into the, the throne room of God wherever we are and whenever we want to. So uh, let's... Be thankful for what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Okay, today I'm going to tell uh, tell you about uh, the topic uh, discerning the time. Discerning the time in a time as such. Okay, and it's been a while that God has put the idea of discerning the time on my heart. It was more concerning a particular situation in the beginning until recently. God wanted me to look into that and teach his people on timing. And as I started to look into the Bible for scriptures, I was surprised to see the number of them and how much percentage of the stories of God is about timing. And I am sure it has been overlooked in the past. I have heard a lot of teachings over the, the years, you know, a lot of uh, uh, sp uh, spiritual principles, but seldomly on timing. I believe this is the time that we need to get into that aspect and to discern the time we are in. All right, let's start by reading Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Ecclesiastes, yes, chapter 3, verse 1 to 14. A time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant 
and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink, and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear Him. Okay, so today, in the first part, we're going to talk about time in nature. So there's a time for everything. God makes everything beautiful in His time. It takes a fool to ignore the time aspect in the world that we live in. Let's firstly look at the time in nature. Right in the beginning, when God created the world, He also created time. Genesis 1:14, and God said, "Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to make sacred times, and days, and years." So not only did God create time, He had to create signs. To mark out times, days, and years, and etc. For whom? Okay, for us. Yes, we need to know the time. Why? Because we need to do things accordingly, don't we? And this is the time before watches and clocks, and way before mobile phones. How did people know the time? By reading the sun, the stars, and etc. Since they were no, they they, they were. Uh, and the signs for timing, and they still are. In Genesis chapter eight, verse twenty-two, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Since this year, I started to do some proper gardening. I planted a few kinds of vegetables, and I learned by experience of the importance of timing. Because no, ma- no matter how much I I wish for the seeds to germinate, if it's not time yet, it just doesn't come out. Okay, the Israelites had one out of ten commandments concerning time. Every seventh day, they ought to rest from their work and make that day holy upon the Lord. And it's not a suggestion; it's a commandment. The cost of disobeying that commandment is death, so it's deadly serious. We understand that human body needs rest, we need sleep every night, and we need a day or two out of a week to rest from our jobs. However, the day of rest, the Sabbath, is more than that. You see, God doubt, uh, doubled the food a、uh, manna. On the sixth day, well, when Israelites were out in the wilderness, so that on the seventh day they didn't even need to go out to pick their food up. When they were quarantined in the wilderness, they collected double portion on the sixth day and consumed it for two days. And there is no manna from the sky on the seventh day. Not only that, the Lord also commanded them to rest the land every seventh year. Again, the Lord will make the land produce twice as much on the sixth year, so that even without working, 
they could still have sufficient to eat for the seventh year. The reason behind it was not just physical or natural, that the body and the mind or the land needs recovery, but also spiritual. This is the way to honor God in time. So let's look at the uh, second aspect today, which is about spiritual timing or spiritual meaning behind times. You see, God has created the world and his purpose for creating us and the world is that he could have a loving relationship with us so that he has put down something both in time and in the physical world for us not to occupy but as a way to honor and remember him. In the physical realm, it is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In finance, it is the tithe, the tenth of your income. And in time, it is the Sabbath. And for Christians, it is the Sunday. And it's not just for God's benefits. You see, God knows that in our fallen human nature, there's a thing called Greed. When humans see a double turnover on the sixth day, they don't necessarily interpret that as a blessing from God and the supply for the seventh day when they rest and fellowship with God, but may well think that, look, we had a good increase. That means we are capable of earning more. So let's aim for more and work harder on the seventh day. And if we could keep the rate of increase, We will have enough to buy a big house, a fancy car, and luxury holidays. Okay, so timing is not only natural, but also spiritual. And God's will of time is secret. Let's read Matthew chapter 16, from verse 1 to to 4. The Pharisee and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning today, you will say today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times or the times of God. A wicked An adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. Clearly, Jesus was saying uh, in the same way when we see certain signs and know uh, know what will come concerning the weather, we should also know what's coming spiritually or historically. When we see certain signs, In the same way that the sun, the moon, the star constellations mark out the time of a day, a month, and a season, miracles or certain things in life should also mark out a spiritual or historical time for mankind. Since God has different grace for different time, it's crucial to know when it's time to sow, when it's time to reap. Because God gives the grace of sowing and the harvest at the right time. When it's the night, God gives the grace of good night sleep, hopefully. When it's the spring, we see things start growing. And when it's, well, and hay fever. When it's the winter, God gives grace for the roots to grow stronger. In the morning or the beginning of a week, a month or a year, God gives us the grace of planning and strategy. If you miss it, there's no point insisting on doing it at the wrong time. And all you have to do is to wait for the next time it takes, well, it takes a fool to to do things, uh, to do his works against the timing and pretend to know better than anybody and God. Okay, so God also expects us to move with his timing. In Matthew chapter 11, Verse 15 to 19. Whoever has ears, let them hear. To what can I compare this generation? They're like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. 
We play the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. So, do we know our time of rejoicing, or mourning, running, or waiting, sowing, or reaping, keeping, or changing? Do we recognize our time and move with God? Think about it. What if Israelites fail to recognize Moses and God's timing for them to get out of Egypt? What if Lot and his family fail to know the time of doom of cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and fail to flee? Check this out. Only Noah and his family recognized the time of the great flood that was to come, and and obeyed God to build the, that ark and got into it at the right time. What happened to the rest of humanity, and especially the people whom us had seen Noah building the ark? For years, I must have asked the question: Why? Oh yeah, this is deadly serious. Not only that, God also has His timing for new kind of worship. In John chapter four, verse twenty-one to twenty-six, woman, Jesus replied, "Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem." Or in church, maybe, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet the time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and His worshippers must worship in the spirit. And in truth, the woman said, "I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us." Then Jesus declared, "I, the one speaking to you, I am He." So when Jesus came, he has brought a new revelation, a new kind of worship, and a new covenant. Failing to recognize the time, and the man Jesus in front of them. Means not being part of God's grace of salvation. So let's look in to the third part that we talk about today, which is discerning our time. Discerning the time that we are now living in. According to Matthew chapter sixteen, verse one to four, they failed to discern the times of the Lord, not because they couldn't. Not because they couldn't, but because they wouldn't. One thing that blinds us from God's time is our pride. The religious leaders failed to recognize Jesus; hence, they were left out in God's grace. They knew what God has done, but they don't know what God is doing here and now. Anyone who failed to move with God when God is moving. Or has already moved, they are stuck in their religion. Most likely because of their pride. They are saying in their heart that while they have known all about God, they have been studying God's past deeds all their lives. They are sure that they are the gurus of God's past works. So when they saw the man Jesus, who was different, instead of being humble and know that this is the Messiah, prophesied many many times in the past that had come, they wanted his death. They are the people who not only fail to move along with God when God has ordered a new covenant. 
And when God has said, "This is the time for Israelites and all mankind to get into my new covenant and to obey my Son Jesus Christ," they failed. Not only that, they kill Jesus. They demand his death. They wanted him dead. They wanted this this man, Jesus Christ, sent by the Lord, to die. What a tragedy! All because they are so stuck in their past religion, in the past deeds and words of God, and fail to recognize this new thing. Jesus Christ. So, what time are we in? We are in the beginning of the end. Jesus is coming back soon. We may be hoping that when this pandemic is over, we could go back to normal, and life could get back to previous state. Well, let me tell you, surely. Is not possible. We are right in the middle of the turning point of history, and we can't get back to normal. The normal has been changed forever, and the world's normal is not even normal in God's eyes. For better or for worse, the world is now different. The society, you see, the society has been worshiping the mammon. It failed. It failed to rest. It perpetuates people chasing money and comfort, and forgot about God. And now we are all forced to rest at home, because the society owes God a regular rest and honoring Him. You see, Israelites were taken exile for forty years because they failed to let their land rest. For forty years, they owe God, and as a society, the Western world also owes God for His reverence, for His honoring. Think about the events that happening on Sundays, the sports, shopping, and everything else to entertain our physical bodies. To entertain the lust of our eyes, to entertain our greed, but we fail to honor God. While people are worrying for the finance and economics, we see the greed behind the globalization and putting benefits above morals in trading with countries that are dictatorships. And Western countries seem to have forgotten that it is God. Who gives prosperity, not those big unions forged by men or countries with cheap labor? And don't expect we could go back to our previous comfortable life because we are approaching the end of days that Jesus has already foretold us in the Bible: wars, plagues, earthquakes, and so on. They're happening in more frequency. And the warfare between God and evil now is more and more obvious, and there is no middle ground. Let's not forget that we are in the warfare, right from the beginning. We need to take the right side. And again, God is calling the UK back to its Christian foundations, and God has grace for us in times as such. What is His grace? What does He want us to do? I believe God is pouring out strong faith, miracles, and apostolic anointings to boldly proclaim His good news and to change societies. His revival is coming. The church will move in power again, just like the Book of Acts. His Spirit will fill all flesh. And all will be empowered, because in darkness the light is even brighter. Dear brothers and sisters, we are in a special time of history. 
Do not seek comfort. Seek God. And are you prepared? Are you moving in God's grace for time as such? Is your Christianity fresh? And you, you have the wisdom to discern what time we are in and discern the will of God or the will of evil. Have you chosen your side correctly? Do you stand on the ground that God has given you? In the time as such, in things that God wants us to have an attitude, to have a saying, and to have some deeds. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray in repentance. Lord, we repent for our pride that has blinded us from seeing your timing and from being complacent. And God, we ask for your forgiveness and renewal. Okay, let's think about the ways. Well, let the Holy Spirit guide you to think about the ways where we fail God over the years, in our personal lives, in public lives, in church lives, that we are blind, that we are we're strong in in doing things that maybe God has already said to done with, to done away with. Let's think about it and repent. And when we repent, bear in mind that God is faithful and he promised us to forgive all our sins and renew us. Let's also pray for God to reveal us His will for us here and now and be determined to move with God. Yes, yeah, so God, please, as we pray, as we seek your face for here and now, let us know what is going on in the world. Let us know what we should understand and take a stand. And Lord, we, we, we pray that give us strength to move with you. We don't want to be your enemies or we don't want to be ignorant. We, we are your children and we want to move with you. We are your representatives in the society. Amen. Okay, let's also pray for the willingness to change and ask God to empower us. God, we are willing to change. Forgive us that in the past, we're so stubborn and yet your grace abounds. And Lord, now we realize that we have failed to recognize your time and your will for here and now. And Lord, forgive us all our sins and give us this power to be willing to follow you and to be will and to to have the power to carry out what you have for us and let us fix our eyes upon jesus christ the beginner and finisher of our faith and also the rewarder of our faith let's fix our eyes on eternal reward and not the comfort or the lust of this time of this life Thank you for watching. May God bless you and renew you and use you powerfully in the time as such. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sammy and I wanted to reach out to you from our home to yours because we're sensing it's time to sound the trumpet and call the 24-7 tribes to get behind a prayer initiative called Unite 
7.14. You probably know 2 Chronicles 7.14. So when God promises that if we'll just humble ourselves and turn to him in prayer, he'll forgive our sins and heal our land. The model is really simple. Just pause to pray each day at 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. in unison with millions around the world. That's twice a day, one voice. We've been praying non-stop for 20 years and this is our biggest challenge yet. God's been preparing us. He's positioned us as a movement for this moment and the model we're going to use is Unite 714. Together, let's cry out to God for the healing of our lands from coronavirus and a spiritual awakening in our time. Doggy in the window, <laughs> the one with the waggly tail. How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> I do hope that dog is for sale. I must take a trip to California and leave my poor sweetheart alone. If he as a dog, he won't be lonesome. <laughs> Say 